It's official. Emerson Mnangagwa is the president of Zimbabwe. The judge today ruled in the ZANU-PF's favor, saying there was no proof of rigged elections. But the MDC Alliance president was certain he had a case. So what went wrong and where to from here? To speak to this, we have the MDC Alliance SA's chairperson, Trust Ndrovu, Kennedy Mandaza, spokesperson for ZANU-PF South Africa, and Nobuhle Ajiti of the Zimbabwe Communist Party. Welcome to all three of you, and thank you very much um, for coming through. Let me start with you. Your thoughts on the, what the courts had to say today? Thank you so much, and good evening to your viewers. Um, we are very, very excited. In fact, it's the excitement that we have had since um, the declaration of President Emerson Mnangagwa as the president. And uh, what happened today is a fulfillment of the democratic process and uh, the constitutional right of uh, those who felt aggrieved uh, with the results that were announced and the declaring President Mnangagwa as the duly elected president of the, of the country. And uh, when the process was going through, we knew very well that uh, MDC did not have the kind of um, evidence that was required in order to overturn the, the declaration that had been done because the people had spoken on, on July the 30th and it was enshrined in the numbers that we saw. And uh, we are also equally happy to the extent that uh, there was competition and we appreciate that uh, that's what the president had spoken, that is opening the democratic space for all people to contest. Trust? Good evening, um, the viewers and yourself. Oh, well, uh, it's still a sad day, it's still uh, at night, a dark day for, for the people of Zimbabwe. As far as we are concerned, there's, no, there's nothing new. Mnangagwa is a representation of the old regime that was Robert Mugabe. And the, of course, looking at the things, what transpired today in the courts, we will not uh, dwell so much on the merits and demerits of the judgment before our legal team studied. But um, my first impression is that uh, we have seen that uh, it's actually a clear demonstration that uh, our judicial system is not independent. We still have uh, a, a, a compromised judicial, uh, state institutions in Zimbabwe, including the judicial system. You would recall that uh, just before the judgment, uh, there was already preparations for the inauguration of the president. They were already, and, and uh, you, you could also remember that uh, the applicant's uh, defense uh, was actually prevented to defend uh, it's client, their client in full capacity. If you could remember that we had other lawyers from South Africa who were prevented from uh, participating in that case, uh, mainly uh, prevented by the Minister of Justice who, is also, who was also the agent of uh, uh, Nangakwa himself. That shows also the, the executive interference into the judicial system. So, of of course, we have a lot of uh, issues over this issue, which we think is so much biased. Okay. Okay. Um, let me just say we are relieved. Some of us are relieved because we've been in suspense for the past uh, weeks, like since the 30th of July. So we are happy that finally at least all the suspense is over and then we can... Um, maybe move forward and we are hoping that the president uh, elect is going to work with all the political parties that have lost uh, talk to the, the the other 22 political aspirants seek their ideas view them strategize and pave a way for uh, pave a way forward because our lives have been on hold ever since so I think from today henceforth or from the inauguration henceforth our economy is going to improve somehow because he has promised he has given us hope uh, Emerson Nangako has given us hope that he's going to work on rebuilding our our economy is going to work on peace within our country and everything so we are just hoping for a way forward we are tired of pulling strings here and there because we've, we've always had the opposition always giving us hope that they won the elections and they have proof uh, that uh, um, 
it, it's actually Nelson Chamisa won the elections and then when they are given the platform to, 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 to prove themselves in court, then they, they actually failed us. So now we are happy that all this is over now. Now, Kennedy, surely you can't be triumphalist about this, even though you may have won. There's a country's future at stake. What do you think should be the responsibility of both the winners and losers? What should happen now to put Zimbabwe back where it belongs? Um, the, both parties have a responsibility. And like you have rightfully said, uh, we are gracious in, in, in victory. And uh, already the president has extended his hand to Nelson Chamisa and all other participants, contestants in the elections to make sure that they come on board. But more importantly, ever since the president came on board, he has been preaching uh, peace, unity, and re-engagement of all people that have interest in Zimbabwe. And this is the path that he's going to take right now. And we equally think that um, those that participated in the election, and if they have a heart for, the Zimbabwe, uh, for Zimbabwe as a country and the Zimbabweans, they should come on board. They should accept for the, the victory of President Emerson Munangagwa and offer to work with him. Yes, we know there are contesting ideas that they have. If they proffer them to the benefit of the Zimbabweans, then we will begin to see Zimbabwe moving forward. I think my sister here has rightfully said that we are tired of seeing people that go into the political arena on an antagonistic nature. And when somebody wins, we do not see them bridging bridges in order to make sure that we move the country forward. I think Zimbabwe is bigger than individuals. And Trust. we should put that aside and move the country forward. Trust, yes, even in defeat, how yeah. gracious are you? Are you prepared to do something to make sure that the country uh, moves beyond where it is now for the better? Of course, developing the country, Zimbabwe, has been our, our agenda, has been our national agenda. We are, we are in this politics because we want to see a better Zimbabwe. Some of the ideas that they, they are trying to proffer are ideas that uh, the MDC have been talking about since its inception. But what becomes is, your responsibility in how the country moves forward now, even though you've been defeated? Okay, like I said, uh, you know, these are the first impressions that we are making today. We are still going to sit as a party. The party is the organs of the party. They are going to make resolutions as to way forward. But I, I believe that in, in a collective uh, nature, they are going to come out with the resolutions that will tend to build the country, build the economy. But it's unfortunate that with the issue of legitimacy, which seems not yet resolved, it's going to be very difficult for, uh, for, for, for the country to move forward and develop the country at the moment. In any case, I think even our president will issue a press statement maybe tomorrow, but it does, this, today I'm just making the first impressions of what has come out. Nobushna, you have the last word. Yeah, I just want to say with everything that is happening, we should also give uh, the opposition uh, party political leader, um, Nelson Chamisa, uh, some credit because uh, he did well in the elections. He actually did way better than his predecessor. He managed to penetrate in the, in the rural areas, something that um, Tsangirai failed to do. So for that, I feel like um, uh, President Imasom Nangako should embrace, uh, embrace us all, embrace all political parties, because he's, uh, he's now not only a, pol a president for for Zano PF, but he's now the president of the nation, so he should actually hear us out, open doors to hear what everyone has to say about uh, paving a way forward. That is what I think. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Thanks to all three of you for 